what are the beds in the distance over there? That is the Brushy Canyon, and the top is probably part of the Cherry Canyon. So that's where we're going to start next, is the Brushy, yeah. Our next stop is Brushy Canyon. So we're working our way up section. Yeah, we're going to work up. We started at the bottom. Yeah. We're working our way up. Yeah. So we're in the cutoff now. We're going the Williams Ranch member of the cutoff. Yeah, now we're going to go to the base of the Delaware Mountain Group, which is the Brushy Canyon formation. Then we'll do Cherry Canyon, then we'll do Bell Canyon. And so the Wolf Camp is essentially below us. The yes. Bone Springs, oh, yeah. The Bone yeah. Springs is equivalent to the Wolf Camp. That's yeah. still below our Yeah, feet. and all you can see here of that is about 12 miles back this way at Williams Ranch. You can see the top of the Bone Spring, and that's about it. Oh. And it's a few the hundred bones, feet The Bone thick. Springs is the Lenardian. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then, and so it's, it can be up to like 3,000 feet thick in the center of the basin. Yeah. Above the Wolf Camp. There's some beautiful regional maps in the Delaware Basin of the Bone Spring. The, the, uh, EIA has put out, mm -hmm. and oh, they're gorgeous, and they show the structure, and they show the thickness of it. I, I should have brought those, but yeah. uh, I forgot to bring them. Yep. But uh, oh, it's gorgeous work. It other side this is well we're still just in the upper part of the uh, Russian Canyon there's a ton of fractures coming through here and here's the old road cutting across and somewhere down this canyon right here is where the overland stages both of them passed somewhere right in here is the Cherry Canyon formation. It's equivalent to the Goat Seep. Uh... And if you want, well, you definitely can see it. If you want, you can go over here and you can get up on top and you can look straight across and you can get the, get the whole, whole bloody thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that too. Yeah. The end. So this is called... Wow. So now that the students have come back and said, we think this is a debris flow. We say, yes, it is. This was called the South Wells Debris Flow. And uh, I'll show you where it's come from. Uh, got a little cross section in here. Uh, there we go. So, way back on the back side, mm -hmm. it started back here. And it's come all the way out to about right here. So there's three miles, so three, probably a six mile journey to get here. Wow. And it's full of fusilinids mm -hmm. and other skeletal debris and porosity because it has dissolved and made moldic pores, yeah. but they're not connected. So this would have low reservoir potential. Yeah. And if you come about here, you look close. Some of these little grains in here are fusilinids. That's a that's a that's a crinoid. But a lot of these are fusilinids that have been brought from the margin all the way here, a full six miles. So we took a block of this and acidized it to see if we could get uh, as it came down on the floor to see if we could get conodonts out of this. Right. And we didn't find a single one. You're kidding. No, in a big block, you know, yeah. a couple of pounds, and and it, it just didn't work. Huh. But this is called the South Wells Debris Flow, and you can see how it's downcutting right here in 
to the Cherry Canyon. Yeah. See that beautiful little cut on the side right yep. there? Yeah, sure do. And so, and, and there's probably more than one event in here that's superimposed on here, but yeah, there's the beautiful down cut. Yeah. And then it'll come back up over here on the other side. So this is this is just a beautiful little debris flow. And this has come a long ways. So when you look at the grain size, it's kind of grit and smaller in uh -huh. size. Now the next stop we look at, the Raider slide in the Bell Canyon, it's the size of their vehicle. Yeah. And that. So big, 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 huge difference, you know. In 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 this, because this has went further. And the bigger blocks have dropped out earlier on, and the smaller sand size material is coming in this slurry where they're actually big, long area. That's a down cut again, right there, with an onlap on the down cut. That's, that's what that is right over there. Yeah, yeah, kind of like, kind of like we saw when we were driving up the road before we had lunch and that. And so, so we kind of talk about the debris yeah, this flow. Had be, this had to be all those sand stuff. Yeah, and, and then. And then and you're dropping it down even lower and then online it back up. And yeah. Then you're dropping out. Sure. Yeah. yeah. A lot, and, and, and so there's a ton of sand coming out. Mm -hmm. But the neat thing about these debris flows is then you say, well, here's an example of a little one. Here's an example of a big one, Poza Rica. And, and, and it's a debris flow. And, and so this margin up here is Golden Lane. And then down here is the debris flow play. And, and so this stuff will come off of up here, which is a great reservoir, karst top uh, and, and that. And then the debris comes down and out, kind of like this stuff is here. And is then, Jurassic? pardon? Is that Jurassic? It is, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. Oh, I didn't write the, the, the but I think it is. Yeah. Uh, so anyway. Then, here it is, and here it is after tilting of the Sierras popping up. And so the down dip edge right here is a reverse stratigraphic trap where the down dip part is pinching out, and there's the play right there as you push things up like that. Yeah, so it, it's kind of different. And so I just call them reverse stratigraphic traps. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that's the importance of seeing this. And then with looking at this part, then you say, okay, so how would we get a trap in here? Because we need, we need a trap to hold oil in place in this. So are there up-dip porosity pinch-outs? And if we use another illustration, you would be trying to see if you could find a feature that would kind of look like uh, like here where you want you want that where if you get lots of sand coming down you want it to pinch out up dip and if that's the case ver versus it connects to porosity up dip you're dead there's no play but if it does this you've got a play on your hands so and that's what the Evalon does. Yeah. In, in yeah. the upper bump, part of Bone Springs also. Yep. Yeah. And it, so, it's, you know, Charles, you're kind of right. You know, this on lamp feature right here, now it's against sandstone against sandstone. But if that was against a, a shale on either side of that, then you know, you'd trap. look for a trap and something like that. Yeah. And, and I'll bet you could look for some larger scale traps like that yeah. in that section. Yeah, there's the Albert reservoir, the red. The orange in here is the main reservoir, and the orange in here is the upper you reservoir. You got the mini one right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. So kind of neat. It, it it happens. So so these onlaps are, are boy. If you can get a seal beneath and on top, you're in business. That's the catch. Is getting the seal. So isobacks. What's the secret to prospect for these things? Well. You need some pretty, uh, well, first of all, you need to see, find the wedge. You need to find the thin. That's the key. So if you're just looking at uh, well logs, and if you see a thicker section down dip that's thinning up dip, there's the first giveaway right there. Then if you can get a size line through there, maybe you can see a little bit of that on it. It's not too deep, 4,000 foot or less. But, but it's the well logs that, that, that are 
and giving that away. And, and on seismic, it's, ooh, you might get one extra squiggle in there. Hey. But if you do isochrones, you're looking for the thin out. Either seismic isochrones or rel isochrones. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the contouring yeah. of those internal units. Yes. And so a guy named Brad McCurda used to make a living teaching courses to saying, okay, look at the variations in seismic and make character maps of what does the seismic look like here for that band, what does it look like here, what does it look like there. And you'll see these the thins have one signature and the thicks have a different. And he said, well, there's something there. you know, And, 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 then, and then you just have to find the structure for the strike view closure because you, you need that to, to hold oil in place because if it's just a wedge out like this and if it's flat and if it's subtly tilted up or down all the oil is going to migrate along strike so you need strike view closure besides dip view closure yes and then you're in business you're in business yeah, yeah. So, so anyway good story a fun game yeah very fun stuff and so this is last chance canyon right at the mouth there's a well that was drilled uh, right here and uh, uh, at, at depth and that a dry hole but you come in here and you climb up on the side and you look here and you'll see here's the top of the upper San Andres and it's karstified when you look really close here's this white sandstone that you can see for a couple of kilometers Look at this wedge. This yeah. And then here's all the Grayberg, and then here's this upper part. So I measured a section here, measured a section here to show this wedge, and there it is. Oh, nice. And there's Onlap right there. And so here's a play, because a lot of times these composite sequence boundaries, even if they're karstified, the, the next muddy uh, beds that will come across it will seal it. And then these grainstone beds that come on and on lap on can be reservoir because if you have some tight beds up here, you've got the trap and you've got a porosity wedge out and you're on the edge of a structure like this. Voila, you're in business. So these guys just north of Andrew. Hi, this is Linda Sternback. So I'm back out here in West Texas uh, yeah, looking at the Raider Sandstone uh, out here in the Guadalupe National Park. And gosh, I was out here the first time in 1985 with ARCO Oil and Gas on their training field trip. And uh, I remember it even now. And so every 10 years or so, you get a chance to come back here. And the rocks don't change, but the interpretation has changed and gotten better, digital, 3D. Uh, the if they start to dive, there's more oxygen. If they start to churn the section, there's of oxygen. And that'll take out the organic. It'll oxidize. It. Yeah, so it's okay. not the bug. That's the yeah. point. It's not the bug. It's yeah. the it's the, it's the it's environment. So, so you can go you can go to Florida Bay present day right now. Jump off the boat, grab a sample of block right yeah. there. So Linda, go on up there and stand up there. I'm going to take a picture of you, and you're going to be going like, oh, because that's going to fall off. Oh, okay. You know, as if as if. Uh, no, no, it's from the shelf margin. It's it's the Capitan, but exactly what part we don't know. Yeah. So this exotic block is in the Bell Canyon. Yeah. Bell, Bell Canyon, Canyon and it's part of the Raider Slide. Right, part of the Raider Slide. It's part of the Capitan Reef broke off. That, that almost looks like it's. I'm sure it's not, but it almost oh, looks like it is. No, it's not. Now what we need to you do. You see what I'm looking at at the base of the beds? Yeah. It looks yep. like it's going. We gotta sneak across to the other side oh, once yeah. this truck. So these are thin bedded Raider sandstones of the Bell Canyon Formation. This, that block, when it had a, a, a nicer face on it, it said 
Mr. Mitch was here. Somebody put it in with their rock hammer. And so we had a meeting. We had this group called the Intercompany Inter Technical Group on Carbonate Geology. And we hosted the meeting in Midland. And I got up, and I was the rep, and I got up and I said, well, you know, Mitch does some of this great work out here. And we don't want to interfere with his work, with our work. And so when we get out there, we look for his calling card, and then we leave that outcrop alone, because we know that's Mitch's. And I put up this, back then we were using, uh, uh, where we just, instead of a slide, we had used uh, view graphs, and I put it up, mm -hmm. oh, and it said, Mr. Mitch was here, and the whole place just fell apart laughing. <laughs> it was hilarious. That's how we well, started. Well, some, some critters camping right underneath there. Be careful yeah. there. Uh, yeah, and see, look what somebody's done. They tapped in and up. Yeah. Like that. But yep. you can see the, the coarser grain up to oh, the Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really a nice easy. example. So, so when you look at debris flows, you've actually got three major types. And so if we go back to this one illustration in here, There's uh, the big blocks, and then there's sand, and then there's... Every time a big block comes bouncing down, it's going to start tumbling other stuff, too. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the catch is, is what sets it off? Is it just simply a, a big storm? Or is it a earthquake with faults moving? Uh, you know, who knows? But you'd want to think of the process. Uh, process sedimentology, that's the name of the game. Is, is what process got this to this And period. there's the mud. Yeah. So that's, and yeah. yeah. So let's help the students think about which are the ones that are the most prospective for hydrocarbons. Ah, now, now you're getting into another problem because look between the blocks. What do you see? You don't see other blocks here. Mm -hmm. And so you have to have a setting where it's block on block with no matrix. And, and in the, the, the example I can think of in the Middle East, we would see the thickest debris flow I ever saw was about four, four and a half feet thick. And it had no reservoir potential. Yeah. No, it did. It did have it. But when you got down to about a foot to a foot and a half, that debris flow had went so far that it was chewing up mud with it and incorporating it in between. And when it froze, as they call it, uh, it had no inner particle porosity. That's how they settle, because when they settle, then you're going to have differentiation of grain sizes. The problem with a lot of these is there's so much mixing that there's no permeability. Uh, and, and well, when the blocky stuff at the base, we already saw yeah. the vugs, and they don't go anywhere. Right. Yeah. So well, that was isolated. that was that, those work because they dissolved. Yeah. They dissolved. Yeah. And so you want inner block or inner grain porosity and you and that means you need to find the thicker ones that haven't traveled as far if you travel further you keep chewing up mud and mixing it in with it and then you're in trouble yeah you get them because you have no uh, inner particle porosity left and then you're in trouble that's 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 the it, it's history you know so there's a center basin platform because blocks of the wolf camp now yeah. I'm just building on your analogy yeah. They like staying close to the center basin platform because of the big blocks. Yeah, they're weight. Yeah, they're so heavy. Yeah. So they would be wolf camp blocks. They're, they're